so greetings YouTube and welcome to another episode of the weekend salary man so now it's not actually the weekend but I do find myself in Chamshu for reasons which I will explain in a separate section um, you know this is just a part of Seoul that uh, I've always wanted to explore I've been here a couple of times but uh, I've never like done a full full tour of Chamshil and so you know there's there's a fair bit to see obviously the main draw card is Chamshil Tower it's the fifth tallest building in the world but um, yeah especially in summer you know when the sunsets are so vivid and rich I wanted to see kind of what that would be like so I walked around um, you know the shopping area itself the tower area uh, because right next to the tower there's of course Lotte World Mall and then I also took a walk down to Songnidangil, which is kind of a theme street. I guess you could say it's filled with cafes and restaurants and it's one of these kind of very South Korean uh, trendy streets. Uh, so I took a walk around there as well. And yeah, now I'm just posted up here next to the tower. Um, I found a very comfortable spot to sit and I don't feel too self-conscious shooting here in public. It's been an interesting few days just walking around Chamshil, seeing what it has to offer which uh, to be honest for me personally it's probably not quite my cup of tea but it's an interesting area nonetheless. Of course this whole time I've been using my Fujifilm XS10 and my Sigma 18-50 to um, millimeter f2.8 to capture most of the um, action but you know for me it's been about uh, eight months I, th I would say shooting on Fujifilm and you know before then I shot a lot on Sony and for me I've just I've really fallen in love with the Fuji ecosystem because of this specific camera and so this video I wanted to make this part of the weekend salary man specifically talking about people who are considering switching to Fujifilm and why this camera, this camera that I'm talking to now looking at specifically might be the best bet for you, the XS10 and I will say that this does apply to the XS20 as well. Now there are a few reasons for this and if I can just quickly paint a picture I remember when I was first looking at Fuji cameras I went to the shop and they had two options, well there are two cameras that I was looking at and that was the XE4 and the XS10. Now the XC4 was a very typical Fuji camera, beautiful nostalgic retro dials, very minimalist you know on the front but it still had um, you know uh, dial specific controls or function specific controls like ISO, um, aperture, shutter speed, I don't know anyway it was just very Fuji and then I picked up the XS10 which is a bit more conventional I guess in terms of camera bodies you know I compared the two and when I picked up that XE4 I just felt so lost I felt like I didn't know how to use the camera at all um, and obviously with each camera system there's a learning curve but when, when I picked up the XS10 it just felt so natural it felt like this is you know going to make my life so much easier and ever since buying the XS10 I haven't regretted it one bit so if you're thinking of switching to Fuji, here are four reasons why I would suggest making the Fujifilm XS10 or XS20 your first Fuji camera. Now reason number one is pretty obvious and that's going to be ergonomics. Fujis are renowned for their uh, nostalgic retro style dials and a lot of people enjoy them for that. But for me coming from Sony which employed a traditional PASM dial um, I really wasn't I mean I was interested in the Fuji you know layout the traditional Fuji layout but like I say when I picked up that XE4 it just I felt all out at sea it felt very unfamiliar and so I feel that's why I've taken so well to the XS10 is because of the ergonomics you've got a nice chunky grip you've got you know like I say a conventional PASM dial everything is relatively intuitively laid out for someone who's coming from uh, another camera ecosystem. On top of that you do get a touch screen uh, and a flippy touch screen at that so the touch screen is over here the camera is over here but that definitely makes things a lot easier uh, people have their preferences as to which kind of touch screen they prefer but I think out of all the Fuji touch out of all the Fuji um, flip out screens this one is probably one of the better ones. 
The second reason you should consider getting an XS10 or XS20 as your first Fuji camera is because these cameras have IBIS. Now, granted, you could get stabilized lenses, which work almost just as well, but, um, you know, the the XC4, for example, which is, I would say, very similarly priced, doesn't have IBIS, um, although it does have similar video recording capabilities. But the IBIS, for me, you know, a lot of people think about IBIS only in terms of video, but the IBIS for me has made such a huge difference, especially when shooting in low light and when I need um, just an extra stop of um, of light. And that stabilization allows me to capture, you know, that, that, that extra stop. So the IBIS for me has been a game changer in this body and it's allowed me to really expand my shooting outside of what I used to shoot before. The third reason why you should consider the Fujifilm XS10 or XS20 is that it, at its core, it doesn't really sacrifice on the Fujifilm experience. So granted, it doesn't have the layout, like I've mentioned, but you get all the film sims, you get, you know, the ability to create your own recipes. You've got the x 4 sensor, I think it is, a 26.2 megapixel sensor in the camera. So you get all of those functions. It doesn't really sacrifice on anything, even though it's remarkably cheaper um, or relatively well priced within the Fuji lineup for what it offers. And that brings me to my fourth and final point on why you should consider this, this camera as your first Fujifilm camera. And that is because it is probably one of the most reasonably priced Fujis in the lineup. So you don't have to break your bank to, to get this camera. It's not as, it's nowhere near as expensive as an X-T5, as an X-H2S or, you know, the cameras of the, that standard. But, you know, the user experience is still very similar and still very Fuji. The XS10 is a sub $1,000 camera, which is kind of hard to believe for what it offers. Um, I know the XS20 is about $300 more as of uh, kind of the middle of 2023, but the package for what you get for the price, it, it really just makes sense if you're looking to find an entry point into the Fuji ecosystem without having to splurge a lot of cash. So super competitive feature set, really economical price. For me, when I was switching over from Sony, I didn't have a lot of Sony gear that I had to sell off. When I bought the XS10, it didn't feel like a huge financial burden. I just love this camera as a hybrid shooting camera. It really does the job in both video and photo. Oh, I definitely will keep it for a long time before I consider switching to either another Fujifilm body or you know perhaps switching ecosystems but this has just been such a revelation for me over the past eight months using this Fujifilm XS10 body within the Fujifilm ecosystem has just opened up so many possibilities for me both in terms of recreational shooting and in terms of professional shooting. So I'm out here in Jamshil for a sunset shoot, just not a shoot per se, but just trying to capture golden hour in Jamshil. Uh, it hasn't disappointed, I guess, but you know, there's something about landmarks and cities that are kind of almost, uh, you know, hypnotic in a way. And that was really the main reason why I came here is because the tower, Jamshil Tower, is such a central landmark of Seoul. It's like a kind of the beacon that everyone can can kind of identify and so this video I haven't shot it over the course of one single weekend but actually over the course of a few days so this is the third time that I'm coming out here it's also the first time that I'm doing a talking head uh, piece to camera out in public so feeling a little bit uh, self-conscious about that that but the views the views are definitely worth it here at Sokchon Lake um, which is right next to the tower and it is just about setting now the sun and it's this beautiful golden summer glow in Seoul that uh, that you only really get in summer to be honest the clouds are just it, I can't even find the words to, to describe them but summer in Seoul is it's swelteringly hot the sunsets are just fantastic and so that's what I really tried to capture with this video
hope you enjoy the b-roll of Chamshil and uh, you know just kind of showing you what the area has to offer it's approaching the end of summer here in Seoul which means the weather is going to calm down a bit and hopefully that means more adventures more getting out more exploring and just capturing more photos and video that's going to be it for this week's episode of the weekend salary man if you enjoyed it please leave a like and subscribe if you got any value from the video really would appreciate it i hope you enjoy the b-roll of chamshil and uh you know just kind of showing you what the area has to offer so thank you once again for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one